Good morning, world. How's it going today? Good Friday. Welcome to everyone. Um, yeah, I've got a topic for today I want to talk about. Let's see if we get anyone in here. We have another big YouTuber that had decided to do live shows. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. People got to do what they're going to do, right? So, yeah, hopefully uh, we at least have a few people that come in. Got a couple things I want to talk about today. I need to get this stuff arranged, don't I? <laughs> oh, yes, you are, Tracy. Tracy was first. Thank you for popping in. I think a lot of people are over at the Liquidation OH's channel, but I'm not going to alter what I'm doing because I've been doing it since the beginning of the year. So, hey, Monty, good morning. Michelle, good morning. Chad, reseller Rockefeller, what's up this morning, bud? Destiny, the Shamrock Pixie, welcome, welcome. How's it going? I'm glad it's Friday. Uh, my wife was actually able to telework today because we've had some bad weather in Northern Virginia here. It's actually not too bad at all, but they still gave the uh, telework option. So that was cool. I got to sleep in, got to sleep till about seven o'clock. I love that. Yeah, it's it's, it's a sad, say, sad state of things when sleeping in is till seven o'clock in the morning, but it is. Uh, good morning, Karen Henderson. Good morning. Thank you for coming in. Denise in Minnesota. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fran, hello. Yeah, Chad, yeah, Chad, the reseller Rockefeller said, yeah, I've seen that he started going live about the exact same time. Yep. And what can you do? I mean, people know their own schedules. Uh, yeah, it's just like I talked about. You can't, you got to focus on you, you know, and is it annoying? Sure. But what can you do about it? Absolutely nothing. So I just got to keep on doing what I'm doing and I uh, hope it works. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. I uh, appreciate all the uh oh can everybody still hear me uh, my window just started spinning I've had some issues with the internet recently i don't know what's going on hope everybody can still hear me let me know if you can um diane matthews welcome l the 24 picker good morning yeah march 1st warmer weather is on the way we hope at least Danny, Charleston, South Carolina, EMM, welcome in. Piper John, thank you, thank you, thank you. Georgia Picker, how's it going? Sounds good, good, thanks. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know, like the window started spinning in the YouTube window, and also I have the Google Hangouts window over here, and sometimes you can't tell. I know the internet was, I did uh, one of those, the live hall video the internet was really laggy you know when i rewatched it you know i'll go back and rewatch the video to see what i can do better you know self-critique and uh i was like man the internet was bad because it would lag and the sound would cut out and yeah it was crappy but what can you do when you go live when you go live stuff can happen you see here there you go see tracy thrifts it says you are back yeah it, it cut out there for something for some reason And it did it again. Uh, I was just uh, putting in my password there. It, did, it does that almost every time now. Sorry, guys. Like I said, it uh, it made me enter the password. Uh, Dawn, two hip chicks. Welcome, Sean Matheny. Welcome. Anissa, welcome, welcome. I hope everyone sticks with me here through that 15-second delay because of the stupid Google logging me out and making me log back in. Uh, uh, Karen says, Karen Henderson says, annoying to have to deal with direct TV, AT&T. Yeah, oh, that's no problem. Yeah, I get it. John, Dad's Vintage Garage, welcome from down in Richmond, Virginia. Tanya, welcome. Yeah, yeah, Chad, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> For some reason, it seems like more often than not recently when I do these live videos, YouTube slash Google makes me uh, enter my password and log back in. I have no idea why I have it set to where it automatically is supposed to remember passwords and everything, but I'm glad. Yeah, sorry, Don. Okay, so 28 watching, fantastic. I know I have 
loyal viewers and you guys are what brings me back day after day hit that thumbs up if you will we do appreciate it all those interactions helps with the channel of course um so mike the maniac picker good morning so that the, the title of that you know i was racking my brain like and with, you know stuff gets beaten like a dead horse topic after topic after topic but I want to do a little bit of blast from the past today. I want to do a trends and fads and flipping on eBay. You know, I've been selling on eBay as far back as 1998. Um, the I, I still remember the first thing I sold on eBay was some Swarovski crystals uh, that I'd gotten on clearance at a job I was working. I was working at a part-time job. And uh, at that part-time job as well, it leads into the topic here. It was called, it's a place called World of Science. I don't know if any of you want, anyone uh, remembers that place. It's actually a really cool store. Uh, they sold like, you know, crystals and rocks and fossils and crystals and games and, you know, science kits. And yeah, it was a, uh, it was a really neat little store. But I uh, worked there part-time and they also had Beanie Babies. So we'll get into that here in a second. Uh, John said he's off to read Dr. Zeus for his uh, daughter's class. Thank you, John. No problem. Have have fun today. Good morning, David. Welcome, welcome. Uh, and this says my internet, or you know, her internet is being a pill today. So when it blips, I wonder if it's you or me. It's me this morning, but hopefully everything is straightened up now. So the candle hoarder. Hello. Welcome. How are you doing this morning? Mary McQueen. Yeah, Dawn, it should come back. Uh, Dawn said she had an error. The refreshing. Shaw, Shaw, happy Friday. Good morning. Thank you, Dawn. Will, Honda Hangouts, welcome from Ohio. Thank you. So uh, I was working. I had a part-time job back in the, the mid to late 90s. I worked all kinds of part-time jobs and servers and stuff, you know, just trying to make your way in life. But uh, part-time job at a place called World of Science. And uh, this was the height. If you guys remember... Of course, if you're old enough, uh, hey, Dan, New Hampshire guy, uh, that, you know, as early as 96 or 97 was the Beanie Baby craze. I mean, that's when they just, people were going nuts about this stuff. You know, I never was into them, of course, because they're Beanie Babies. But the, the place I had a part-time job at, World of Science, had uh, had Beanie Babies. So I had a little access to them before... Uh, the general public, you know, not that we could buy all of them and stuff. We had to put some out on the shelves, but you know, I could get one out of a bag that came in. If anybody doesn't know these beanie babies, when they came in, they came in a, uh, you know, big boxes, of course, but they would just have like 25 of them in a bag, in a plastic bag, you know, and I could get one out of the bag along with the other employees. So, uh, a very specific instance I remember is the, when the peace bear came out, you know, that tie dye ba beanie baby bear with the little piece you know, symbol on it. I don't even know what the symbols is, symbol is called, but it's, uh, uh, when that came out, it was, it had to be 1998 or 1999 in that, in that range. But, uh, I also had another part-time job in uh, catering with a barbecue place in the, that area. And the manager of the restaurant, this lady named Bonnie, I still remember her name. I don't know why, but the, her name was Bonnie. And she had a daughter that wanted the peace bear, you know, it was coming up on Christmas and stuff. I was like, I I could probably, you know, get you one. She was like, Oh, I'll, you know, I'll give you, you know, $50 for this beanie baby. I'm like sold. Cause they cost like six bucks, you know? And I'm like, I can get one. So I was, uh, that was one of my small forays into uh flipping beanie babies was I bought the, you know, bears for five, $6 and would sell them to people, you know, not even online people for, you know, 20, 30 and the piece bear 50 bucks. So uh, if you got, do you guys have any stories like that back in the nineties flipping, and some of the other stuff, I made a list, like stuff I could remember from back in the 90s that was hot. You know, people don't realize it because time flies, but the uh, Tickle Me Elmo was actually first released in the 90s. Uh, and it was really, you know, a big, big, huge thing. Um, did you guys ever flip any of those like in person, put a classified ads in the paper? I know people that did that. Uh, let me see here. Oh, thanks, Georgia Picker. Georgia Picker says they're watching from work. I'll be quitting my job by summer and come on eBay and Amazon. That's awesome, bud. That is so awesome. I'm glad you're delving into the world. Mary McQueen says I was working at Hallmark during the Beanie Baby craze. I feel your pain. Absolutely. So you know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, people go nuts over those things. 
Tanya said, I had family members that sold Beanie Babies back in the day. Uh, Moronic Pest says they remember waiting at McDonald's in lines to get the teeny Beanie Babies to resell. And uh, Georgia Picker says he has one of those bears listed right now. You're talking about the Peace Bear? <laughs> Wonder how much I, I should have. You know, I'm going to do that. You know what? While we're live here, I'm going to... Uh, in Fayetteville, Arkansas, Shaw Shaw. I, I'm sure I think they had locations all over, but uh, I don't know exactly where. But I worked at the one in Fayetteville, Arkansas, in the mall there in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, Tanya. Oh, yeah. So, Moronic Pest, the teeny beanies were hot, but by 98, they weren't hot anymore. Oh, so 97, they were hot. 98, they weren't. That's just how quick these fads and trends go. The, and the large beanie baby themselves had a really good run because they were really, really hot, at least for like three or four or five years there. They had at least a good five-year run, and they and they still make them today. You know, I mean, they're not near like they were, you know, for resale and stuff, but uh, they still make them today. Uh, I'm going to go over here to eBay real quick. I know you guys can't see it. I'm a, I need to download OBS and teach it myself so I can screen share it, but I'm going to go over it, and you guys can do it too live with me. Go over to to uh, eBay, and I'm going to just search Beanie Baby. Beanie Babies. Just generic Beanie Babies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter it once it cooperates here. And a lot of times you'll see these Beanie Babies sold in huge lots on eBay and stuff. And uh, My internet. I, I'm, I think I may need to upgrade my internet. <laughs> <laughs> I need to start selling some more stuff or get some more ad revenue so I can pay for better internet. <laughs> so beanie babies. Okay. So I'm going to search beanie babies generic and I'm going to go scroll down on the left hand side of your screen. I'm going to hit just like your comp and stuff. I'm going to hit sold listings and that pops up, you know, ended recently on the sort on the, uh, towards the top, right hand side of the screen there's a drop down box for ended recently or everything what i'll select is price plus shipping higher highest first so and most of these are absolute like bull crap you know like the first one is a valentino bear that sold for shows it sold for forty two thousand dollars that's absolute horse hockey it's either just you know fake or somebody's money laundering or you know something so i'm going to scroll down to get past these ones in the thousands to get the one I think is the first one that's the most realistic. Which is a long list because they have, you know, a bunch of these seven, six, seven, five thousand dollars, which is all bull crap. Don't believe it. It's just like the black diamond VHS that people say they sold for thousand dollars. It's all bull. So uh, let me see here scrolling. I think the Valentino bear that, that that's the top one that's selling is actually a rare one. So, uh, but who knows exactly how much it's worth. There's a peace bear <laughs> right there. It, that's what's hard about comping on eBay. Sometimes it's like these aren't, I know it can't be real. Like these ones that sell for thousands of dollars. I just know they're not, you know, I uh, don't, don't believe that stuff. And I don't know what people's angle are on that stuff, but, uh, yeah. anyway this is turning out harder than i thought it would be because is there so much uh stuff that's just not true here <laughs> here's a here's a good uh it's a real one that's a it's called a wingless quacker a quacker is one of the beanie babies and it's uh, it, it sells for about 500 bucks so it, it shows that there's still rare ones out there that uh Here's a Claude the Crab from 1996 this, uh, that has some solds for about 500 bucks. So yeah, some of these things still sell. You know, I think they did limited runs on some of these. Who knows the quantity, whether it's 1,000 or 10,000, but uh, there is still some rare ones, rare ones out there. But anyway, I'm coming back to the chat here. Okay, scrolling back up here. Um...
uh, to Dawn Two Hip Chicks says she was working at Walmart during the Elmo craze. That's I bet you that was crazy, wasn't it? People fighting each other. Uh, Tracy Thrifted said, "Oh my God, I had so many Happy Meals before they started letting my mom just buy them in the complete sets." <laughs> That's funny. Yep. I have that on my list too. Somebody said Furbies. I have a cheat sheet here. The 1990s. I have uh, beanies. We talked about beanie babies. Tickle me elbows. Furby. I have on here. Uh, I think someone down here also talks about these, but Giga Pets and Tamagotchis. And, and Tracy Thrifted talks about the Tamagotchis there. And also Pogs and Polly Pockets. Oh, I got some visitors here. Give me just a second. Thank you. Come here, puppy. Come on. Okay. Sorry about that. My wife was uh, bringing the dogs down and bringing me a cup of coffee. Okay. Okay, so I was saying to my list here, yeah, I had uh, Pogs, and, and my last one on my list is Polly Pocket. Anybody remember those? Uh, Monty says Furbies were selling again last year. Yeah, I think so. I think they're making new ones. They always try to bring these things back, and this is, we're talking a couple of decades ago already. That's why in my title, I put lessons learned over the decades, because all this stuff comes back eventually, and it'll have a probably a short fad period, but uh, yeah, you can make some money if you get on top of it. And Tracy Thrifts, it talks about the uh, Princess Diana Berry. Oh, absolutely. That was selling for, you know, it probably does still sell, but uh, it was selling for, you know, hundreds of dollars back in the day. Let me see here. Woo. Uh, Piper John says, he, and Monty and Piper John's talking about the, the dregs of the internet living in a rural area. I, mean, I get you. I lived in Arkansas, so trust me, I get you. Ah, good stuff. <laughs> it's amazing how coffee can, it's like, like watering a wilted flower. <laughs> Danny EMM says, I worked at Toys R Us through many craze fa crazy phases. The worst one by far was the Cabbage Patch Kids. Oh, absolutely. And the, uh, and that was when I was, uh, you know, obviously I didn't cabbage patch kids. We didn't get them cause we were poor or my sister didn't, but uh, that was, you know, me and my sister were, you know, in that era of the mid eighties when we were kids. <laughs> Absolutely. Don, and it comes uh, the babies, the doggos. Hello for real girl. Welcome to the chat. Thank you for popping in. It's always good to see new names in the chat. Uh, Sean says the newer Disney princess magic clip dolls are similar to the Polly pockets and they sell great right now. There you go. That's an awesome tip. Everyone. I'm going to make a note of that, you know, just to look it up, just to see what they look like. Disney princess. I need to, maybe use people, everyone has a tip here. What's a good like Instagram or whatever to follow to get the, the hot toy tips and stuff. Cause I'm not against going looking for some dolls. Okay. I got that noted down here. Chad, the reseller Rockefeller says, who remember oh, Chad, you're, you're, you get where I'm going on my list for the two thousands where I'm going to nest. I have PDAs and on there is Palm pilot. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Don't they? <laughs> yeah, no, Will. Will says you'd mean really don't sell for thousands. Yeah. It's amazing what people will fall for, though. You know, they see that and they go, oh, my God, these black diamond v Disney VHS is still for thousands of dollars. No, they don't. Neither do those Beanie Babies. <laughs> don't believe it. Um, let me see here. Tracy says, I believe with the Diana Bear, it was something about not having the number printed on the inside of the sewn tush tag. Yeah, well, so it was like a like a kind of a misprint or a error or something. Shaw Shaw, 1996, I sold a Hard Rock Cafe pin bought for $9 for over $220 on eBay. Wow, that's awesome. I wonder how much that sells for today, Shaw Shaw. Look up that same pin if you remember what it is on eBay and what does it sell for today versus back then. Thanks, Piper John. Yep, have fun. Find some good stuff. Appreciate it. 
Sean Matheny picked up a lot of nine at Goodwill for two bucks and flipped them for $55. You're talking about Beanie Babies? Because that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Tracy thrifts it. Amazon Slayer, but he's trying to charge folks $80 to follow him on there. Oh, geez. Yeah, I'm not paying anyone for their, that stuff. And neither should you. You can find it somewhere else. But the uh, Don, two hip chicks, says, I still have my Palm TX. Used it as an e-reader for years. That's awesome. Good morning, Indy Colts. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Re Chad, reseller Rockefeller, says, so many people come to me with those Beanie Babies and Disney VHS tapes wanted to sell them to me. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You have to let them down like really kindly and gently go, well, your stuff is not really worth anything. <laughs> I'm not saying it's worthless completely, but it's pretty close to it, you know? So. And Chasha says they still have some can't sell for $9. Yep. Have to start lot lighting them up, I guess. You know, that's what I do when I have individual stuff that won't sell. If I have, you know, like Beanie Babies, just lot them up in lots of 10 or something or five or whatever. Uh, my life says great channel thank you appreciate it uh i know this is off the wall question but how many items on average should someone be able to list uh, i wish i had my old he-man and ninja turtle toys out <laughs> no doubt i had back in the 80s i had a bunch of gi joe transformers he-man i still you know it's all gone <laughs> it's all gone but uh it all depends on you listing you know if i um Here's what, here's my process because I have so much other stuff to do, but in the morning I will try to start listing stuff about nine, nine 30 and I'll list to about 10 30 because 10 30 is when my mailman runs and I go and list out for him and I'll eat lunch, you know, and do some other stuff. But in that hour, you know, I'll list 10 to 15 things, you know, depending on what I'm listing. Cause some stuff like clothes take longer than others, but in general, 10 to 15 things in that hour or so. And then I'll come back down uh, later that afternoon, say about one, one thirty, and I'll list till, uh, you know, about three thirty or so. And then that I'll list another, you know, 20 or so items in that time, 15, 20 items. So in general, in about three or four hours of listing today, you know, you'd list about 30 or 40 items. That's me. That's what I do. So it doesn't mean you can, but you know, if I sat down and list eight hours a day, which I won't do because I would go absolutely batshit crazy. Um, if I sat down and list for eight hours, I could probably list 75 items to a hundred items a day, but, uh, I, I've been able to list, you know, you know, about 30 usually on average a day. And that's just a good average. Like yesterday I did 25. So I did a little bit below, but, uh, if I do what I need to do, I do about 30. So hope that helps. <laughs> that's interesting. Chad, he said, Bolo old Mardi Gras glass beads. Is there a good way to tell Chad that you can tell the chat yeah, to tell the difference between glass and plastic? I know people sometimes say, duh, that's easy to tell, but it's not really. Like sometimes you even have a, you know, a cup or something and it's hard to tell, you know, you're tinking it with your uh, fingernail and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. Thanks, Jed. Uh, let me see here. Uh, fishing and picking. I find that anything that says it's a collector, limited edition, et cetera, are worth the items in general. Yeah, that's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> you know, there's always exceptions to everything, which I tell people all the time, because if I say something as a blanket statement, they're go, but, but what about, <laughs> but I get what you're saying totally. And I agree with you. Oh, no problem. In my life. That's what we're here for. Appreciate you uh, tuning in. The Georgia Picker, I still have a Masters of the Universe board game. Oh, that's awesome. I used to play that with a friend of mine back in the uh, 80s. He had it. I didn't. But, uh, yep, I remember doing that. And he had, you know, I didn't ever have the big toys. I had the little stuff because we were poor. But a friend of mine back then, his name was Mike as well, he had the big Castle Gray Skull, you know, that folded out and everything. Yeah. And we would play, you know, with the He-Man stuff. Uh, my life vinyls can be eight tracks can be, <laughs> uh, it's hard to nail down, you know, but, uh, yeah, vinyls can be, I've sold a lot of good vinyls, uh, back in, 
I haven't recently because I haven't found any because here they just get picked through. But back when I was in Missouri doing a lot of garage sales, I would find good vinyls all the time. And uh, this is just a general rule of thumb my life. And it's just from my experience. It's not, you know, gospel 100%. But what I found that sold best with vinyls, you obviously want to make sure they're in good condition, both the sleeve and the, and the vinyl itself. But the classic rock especially like 70s like Lou Reed and that kind of stuff man that sells really good Elvis always sells decent but uh, actually old country and western as well sells really well as in like you know 60s 70s you know George Jones Conway Twitty Hank Williams that kind of stuff but old country and western as well but yes the, to answer your question they can sell for really good money the, the most expensive vinyl album I ever sold was, I can't even remember the specific album, but it was a Lou Reed album. So, uh, and the most expensive music thing I ever sold was not an instrument. Actually, it was actually a sheet music from the stray cats from the uh, late seventies, early eighties. And it sold for uh, several hundred dollars sheet music. It's crazy, right? <laughs> Absolutely, Danny. Punk bands, yep, 100%. And a lot of times it'll be these strange, you know, the bands that weren't even that really popular nationally, but they had like a good local or regional following. So you may not even ever heard of them, but their stuff is worth a lot of money. So, yeah. Okay, so on to back to our trends and fads. Uh, somebody, I think it was Chad, you know, he talked about PDAs and I had that on my list, really Palm Pilots and PDAs in the two thousands. Also in the two thousands, you guys remember silly bands. Those, that was a big, huge fad back in those days and they were cheap, but uh, yeah, that was a huge thing. Excuse me. Uh, Bratz dolls that they started in the 2000, uh, 2000s that got really big and huge. Uh, some other stuff in the 2000s was when uh, DVDs and TVs and cars, you know, those portable ones that they would put on their back, you know, on their headrest and stuff. That's when they got really popular in the 2000s. Crocs came on the scene in the 2000s. And one of the bigger toys in the 2000s besides Bratz was uh, Neopets in the 2000s. So, yeah, I know it's usually a lot of toys, especially Christmas craze. But, uh, yeah, other stuff. I wanted to put some other random stuff in there, too. I remember also going back to the nineties ones was, uh, when doc Martens came to the U S the man, that was crazy. <laughs> they were so expensive. Uh, Mo flips, Rocky Brook picked up 17 PS three games yesterday for $10. That's awesome. That is really good. Buy and get them for less than a dollar a piece. As long as they're not like most sports games, it's a really good deal. Denise says she picked up some old Polly Pockets from the 80s from a lady on Facebook. There were about 12 to 15 in a lot, paid her $75 and sold them individually and made $500. Yowza, that is awesome, Denise. <laughs> and that's something, if we go back to the 80s, man, the 80s was like, I mean, just because I grew up in the 80s, but I, I know so much about it, you know, and I've talked about uh, My Little Pony stuff from the 80s. That stuff is nuts, you know. The bronies or whatever they're called. Man, that stuff is crazy. That's good, Mo. Mo says no sports in it. That's awesome. And my life says this makes me want to go picking. Heck yeah. Go find some stuff. Denise talks about retired American Girl Dolls. Absolutely. A good tip I'll give you about American Girl Dolls is sometimes, you know, if you don't know about them or you don't know what to look for, American Girl dolls have a particular look, but if you can see teeth, you'll always see teeth with an American Girl doll. They'll be smiling and you'll see teeth. Most dolls don't do that. So uh, that's just a good tip. It's not 100%, but it's a 90%. If you see teeth, it's probably American Girl. Chad says the first celebration in America was held in Mobile, Alabama in 1703 Mardi Gras. The glass beads are worth lots of money. Everyone should do some research because you probably pass them up a lot. You know what? I'm going to. I am going to research. I'm always up for learning something new. You know that uh, if you go back and watch my first videos, like literally episode one, I talked about being in this business for a couple of decades, which is true. And I'll talk about always learning something. Um, <laughs> I will never, ever call out any YouTubers by name ever. That's just not my deal. That's not what I do. But 
early on, I had a YouTuber say to me that they don't watch other YouTubers because they can't learn anything from them. And I was just floored. I'm like, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. You don't think you can learn anything. <laughs> oh my gosh. I learned something new every day and I've been doing this my whole life. Literally. I mean, I've been going to garage sales with my grandma and my parents and going to auctions my entire life. And I can still something, learn something new every day. If you think you know it all, you got your head so stuck so far up your hind end. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but like I said, cheers. We'll take all the stuff, right? Uh, J-Dub, Killing Kicks. That's awesome name. Uh, if sold some brand new inbox brats for good money, I got from my mom in law just recently. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a good, if you're just getting into reselling, a good source is your family, you know, be like, you got any old stuff in your attic or your garage you just want to get rid of, get it because there'll be some money in there. I guarantee it. EMM cross colors was very big. Also, oh, I remember Duckhead and yeah, uh, absolutely. And in my area, when I grew up in Arkansas, Ducks Unlimited stuff was huge in the nineties, early nineties. People love that stuff because where I grew up in Arkansas, duck hunting was a huge thing. Thumbs up from ale. Awesome. Yep. Hit the thumbs up. We do appreciate it. Obviously we got the 46 of the most awesome people on YouTube watching right now. And I appreciate every one of you. A Chad says knowledge is the, is king in the reselling business. The more, you know, the more you can make 100%. And that's what I've preached from day one. <laughs> Michelle Lathan says, that's funny. Some, uh, someone told me the same thing recently that about, you know, they don't watch other YouTubers because they already know, it, you know, they can't learn anything. Is that what you're talking about, Michelle? Because if so, that is the most ridiculous thing. I mean, it hurts my brain when people say that. <laughs> Chad, there's so much to learn. No man or woman can learn everything out there in one lifespan. You're right. Absolutely right. Just like you talk about with the glass Mardi Gras be beads. I had no idea, you know. We see stuff all the time in thrift stores. Every time we go thrifting, they go, oh, that looks interesting. I don't know about that. You know, get it, look it up. And most of the time it's crap. But sometimes you're like, holy crap, this is amazing. Hey, Glenn, good morning, bud. He says Mardi Gras doubloos do good. I'm going to have to look that up just to see what they are. Mardi Gras beads and doubloos. I appreciate the tips guys. I really do. I'm, I'm all about learning stuff. I, I get excited when I learn something new. I really love it. Indy Colt says bought a vintage Yankees fleece line jacket for $10 and sold it within 12 hours for almost $75. Absolutely. Especially coming up on baseball season. Uh, Yankees have a huge following. They have a national following. So I sell Yankee stuff all the time. My most recent what sold video, I sold a Yankees hat cap. So yeah, absolutely. Man, Michelle, that's baffling. She says, yeah, someone actually said that to her. You know that they don't watch other resellers because they can't learn anything. That just blows my mind. That tells me a lot about a person. You know, they may be they may be a great YouTuber with a lot of subscribers and stuff, but that goes to the core of a person that you're so arrogant that you think you can't learn anything. To me, that just dumb. That's dumbfounding. You know, I can't even hardly process it. So, uh, Indy Coat says, I also found a vintage Ducks Unlimited jacket the other day. Didn't list it yet. Oh, man, that's awesome. Because the, the shirts usually are everywhere. And the shirts can be hit and miss. But a jacket, that could be a pretty good find. You know, let us let us know if you comp it what it should bring. Uh, Danny says, I find that amusing because each YouTuber has their own area of expertise and to tell me gaining wealth and knowledge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Glenn said it right there. Things change every day, too. Yeah, trends. Exactly what we're talking about. Trends and fads. Is that right, Glenn? Uh, Glenn's old enough, you know, like me, that we have seen trends and fads come and go for over the decades. The balloons. Okay, he said, okay, the balloons. The balloons. Okay, I'll look that up. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> Tommy says, damn, I could have thought. Uh, Kuji. However you say that other word, Sean, John, South Pole, Rockaway would have been very big in Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. It was more of a, 
Levi's and Ducks Unlimited <laughs> and Wranglers, Pro Rodeo Wranglers, where I grew up. Um, oh, I absolutely, Will. I, I, I knew that. It, I, you know, thanks for bringing that up, but I did know that. Will from Honda Hangout says, uh, scratch and sniff stickers from the 80s are gold. Absolutely. The stuff that got put on my homework by teachers and stuff in the 80s, if you can find those uh on in the package you know brand new man they bring good money they bring really good money my least favorite uh scratch and sniff sticker was the pizza it smelled like vomit to me <laughs> it was disgusting <laughs> but look at that he honda will honda hangouts turned two dollars into eleven hundred dollars with stickers that is freaking awesome. That's why I love going to estate sales because estate sales is where you find this kind of stuff. You know, you got some old household and they just, you know, they had kids and they didn't use the stuff and they just stuck it in the attic or the garage and it just sits there for decades. Love that stuff. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, moronic pest, probably the opposite is closer to the truth. You can learn something from nearly every reseller since all have unique experiences. 100%. And then that's my perspective too. That's why I watch, try to watch everyone. You know, it's hard to, but I'll just let it run, you know, in the background if I'm doing stuff, you know, and I'm like, oh, we'll talk about there and rewind it. For real girl says what I want is an original cabbage patch with the whole body made of stocking. Oh, yeah, that was a. Uh, I think that was actually even came out. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was extreme early 80s, maybe even 79, 79 through like 81, 82 was those stocking cabbage patch before they went you know mainstream and all that stuff hmm don says she has the same problem with the fake peach smell it stinks to them <laughs> isn't that funny how we're all different it's just like with thrifting and flipping and stuff we're all different right uh denise says uh retired vintage perfume sells so good absolutely denise that's another thing. Good thing for uh, estate sales. You can find the stuff at thrift, sell, uh, thrift stores and flea markets, but estate sales are best for that. Shasha, my bro-in-law, had a cabbage patch from way back. Had a Braves baseball uniform on it. He get, had given it to my mom, so now he has it. Huh? It could be worth something. Now look it up. Yeah, garbage pill stickers. Yeah, absolutely. Lonnie had a bunch of those recently on his videos, and when he pulled those out, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You know, and I knew about them, but that was great. Absolutely, Monty. Learn something new every day. I'm like coffee. Ronald Sorensen watching YouTube is how I learned about plush. Absolutely. You watch uh flipping hippos. She's really good with the plush. I love plush stuff. I have I have a little basket up here that's just full of plush stuff. It's a hanging like mesh thing below my uh ra overhead racks. And I just when I list the plush, I'll just put them in that hanging thing. Cause they're usually cheap too and they bring really good money so denise says mrs grossman's is a great brand for stickers that's awesome oh absolutely uh dan nh guy says remember no fear oh that's right up my alley dude that's when i early 90s in high school no fear uh big johnson remember big johnson all that stuff and they bring pretty good uh no fear i don't know if it brings any really good money but uh big johnson t-shirts they bring some pretty decent money Uh, uh, Jason says I had a Chicago Cubs cabbage patch kid also an Olympic one. That's awesome. Those special edition ones. I wonder if they bring any more money now, you know, since they're like special editions or whatever, cause we were talking about that, but, uh, yeah. Okay. So for real girls talking about the cabbage patch kids being actually a cloth head or a stocking type head instead of a plastic one. So, yeah. Yeah. And this, uh, Big Johnson. <laughs> I I freely admit I had a bunch of those shirts in high school. Big Johnson shirts. Uh, Tommy Bernard says vintage polo is sick. I have a sweater for sale. I paid $5 for it at the thrift store. Been on for 48 hours and have offers 160 so far. Anything polo stadium from 1992 is gold mine. Absolutely. I had one. It's been months ago now, but I had a Ralph Lauren polo sweater with the skier on it it was a vintage one and man that sold super quick and i probably priced it too low but it had a little bit of a vent, uh, condition issue 
but it, I sold it super quick, you know, for like 50 bucks. So yeah, I love doing that. And obviously if anyone doesn't know about it, most of you probably do, but the uh, big teddy bear Ralph Lauren polo stuff is money in the bank. If you can find them. Good morning, uncle Warren. Thank you for popping in, having a good discussion about trends and fads and old stuff from the nineties, two thousands, even back in the eighties on eBay, you know, selling on eBay and what they brought back in the day, just even flipping like in the classified ads and stuff. A swamp says he has a no fear MX race Jersey. You're going to, you selling that swamp. How much is it going to bring? Hey reseller, man. What's up, man? Thank you for popping in. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> for real girl says it's just a part of her childhood and she wants it. Absolutely. That's why, you know, I see stuff, you know, sometimes in the thrift store for my childhood. I'm like, I'm keeping that. I got stuff back here, like stacked up that is it doing really any good. No, but I like looking at it. <laughs> there is something to say for nostalgia. So, yeah, that's a, that's all the stuff I had on my list. We talked about a lot of cool stuff. The 90s trends from Beanie Babies to Elmo, Pogs, Polly Pockets, Furbies, Gigapets, Tamagotchis. In the 2000s, Silly Bands, Brats, PDAs, Palm Pilots, DVDs, Crocs, Neopets, and a bunch more. We talked about a bunch of stuff. So, Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one, Dan. Co-ed naked. Yep. Uh, Tommy says, I sold the 1992 stadium jacket two to three months ago. It had oil stains on it and two rips. Listed for 189 bucks and sold in 10 minutes. That's awesome. I have to remind myself what those looks like. It's a, it's a Ralph Lauren polo stadium. I probably would recognize it if I saw it, but I'm going to look them up just to refresh my memory. You know, I'm always looking to jog the old marbles in the, the scrambled brain been hit too much in the head between football and the Marine Corps. Oh, that's awesome. Glenn, he says he's gonna, he knows the writer. So he's going to get the Jersey signed by the writer before he sells it. And going to be 200 plus. That's awesome. That's awesome. You have that connection in that world too. So you can get it signed. Yeah. Shaw Shaw. I wonder how much will that you think it'll bring Shaw Shaw and Girl Scout Dictionary. That's interesting. I've sold Boy, Boy Scout stuff before, but not a lot of Girl Scout stuff. Okay, so I'm going to do my YouTube recap. If you guys want, go to the regular YouTube app first to show you the current subscribers. 1,539 subscribers, and that's me. Okay, and go over to the YouTube Studio app. <clears throat> the analytics, we have the last 48 hours, 1,400 views. That's awesome. That's right where it should be. The last 48 hours, the uh, real-time views, this video, 110. Uh, the biggest one, of course, is our episode 83, or what sold video with 764 views the past 48 hours. There's the top five. Uh, past 28 days, 166,000 and change watch minutes. 12,244 views the past 28 days, 13 and a half minutes. Average view duration, pretty standard. $88.49 is our revenue the past 28 days. 75% ad, re ad revenue, 25% super chats. And we do appreciate all you super chatters. 110 subscribers the past 28 days. 62.7% uh, of watch time is from subscribers. 31% not subscribed. What's up with that? <laughs> Hit a homie up with a subscription. 
uh, 95.7% likes versus dislikes. And the top video the past 28 days is episode 80, what sold on eBay, 12,565 watch minutes. I'm going to go into the, the revenue tab here. That's just the charge. You can't really see much, but February 1st to February 28th. So all of February, we our revenue on YouTube was $88 and 49 cents. That was for all of February, 88.49. Big money. <laughs> no whammies. <laughs> oh gosh. I think it was my favorite game show from the eighties was a uh, pressure luck. Remember that? that and let's make a deal for in the 80s 70s and 80s that's some good stuff okay so oh yeah talking about the the uh, creator of cabbage patch yeah it seems like all most of those people that do that stuff get ripped off and stuff like you ought to look up the the story of Bert's bees as well that dude they they ripped him off as well of his brand. Good morning, Margo. Uh, Matt retail says, remember the guy who figured out the pressure luck and won a ton of money. Yeah. He figured out the pattern. Yeah, absolutely. I remember even watching that and I'm like, that's crazy. And there was a, there's actually a, uh, like a documentary on a guy that had the prices for all the prices, right stuff memorized. And he would like, you know, he actually got on the show a few times, but he would yell the prices to people on contestants row and on stage and stuff. And if they listened to him, they would win. There's a, there's a documentary, I think on Netflix or Amazon prime about it. I can't remember what it was called, but it was amazing. The dude memorized every price of everything. <laughs> he was from Texas or something. Um, Michelle says the host of pressure luck died as a pilot attempting to deliver an organ for a transplant. No, that's so sad. I didn't know that. And Moronic Pessy had the prices down to the penny. He did. And he would like yell out the prices and yeah, most of the time people wouldn't listen to him because why would you? But even Bob Barker got to know the guy in the crowd and he would point him out. He'd be like, oh, what's his name is here. You know? <laughs> But that was the heyday of game shows, you know, back when we didn't have much else to do. We didn't have the internet or computers and everyone needed to be entertained. Yeah, exactly. Swamp, Swamp says they call that cheating, but, and they call that cheating. Glenn's not saying it's cheating, but you know, it's just like, uh, like say blackjack, for example, you know, you can count cards and stuff and the casino's like, you're cheating. I'm not cheating. I'm just using every, all the information to my advantage, you know? But anyway, there's actually this past year, there was a big thing about Phil Ivy, like cheating at Baccarat. He didn't cheat at all. He just took advantage of what was available, you know? Yeah, exactly. Denise, the old man, Monty Hall, the, uh, the, uh, Monty Hall, I think his name was, let's make a deal. Yeah. That's what I watched back in the good old days. Can't believe I just said that. Okay. Grandpa. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the candle hoarder says that Wapner on his on at five judge Wapner. It's like rain man. <laughs> exactly. Denise Monty Hall. Uh, Margo, it's not technically cheating, but if you win too much and they think you're counting cards, they, they can't like arrest you or anything, but they'll kick you out of their casino. So <laughs> Denise, I am a grandma. <laughs> I'm old enough to be a grandpa. My, my, I have people I'm with the high school with that are grandparents and here I am. No kids, except I have some puppies and kitties and that's good enough for me. Now my, my 15 nieces and nephews are more than enough for me. Moronic Pest, there was a cheating thing with the Millionaire Game Show 2 involving someone who would cough in the audience until the consistent. Yeah, I remember that as well. Yeah. Pick and roll. Good morning. Uh, that's all right. Go go, go out and uh, score some stuff. Get some good stuff. Thanks, Denise. You have a good weekend. 
for real girl. Oh my God. I remember that. Let's make a deal in the original price. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Bob Barker and Monty Hall, Chuck Woolery. Remember old Chuck. Okay. We're down. We got, we can go another 10 minutes. If you guys have any other questions or anything, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. So, uh, yeah, Michelle says the original price is right starting in the 50s. Yep. Just like, you know, people don't think of it now, but like Jeopardy, it started way before Alex Trebek. And I believe Will of Fortune did too before uh, Pat Sajak. So, uh, yeah. The candle holder, 48 years old and a grandmother, a Mimi to four granddaughters. That's awesome. I bet you it's a fun, you know. Yeah, Bob Barker was the second host of The Price is Right. That's cool. Indy Coates says, be on the lookout for Popeye flexing his muscles. Coffee cup bought for 99 cents and sold for 20 bucks. Yeah, that's awesome. That's right my wheelhouse. Oh my gosh. Moronic Pest uh, named that tune in three notes. You remember that show, but the... The, the songs they would play and people would know these songs off the top of their head. It was stuff that I'd never even heard of. It was a bunch of like classical stuff or like, <laughs> I just never knew any of the music. Cause that's not what I listened to it, back in the eighties. It was like, that was grandparents music or something. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, that sucks. Glenn Glenn says no garage sales in Louisiana this morning. It's coming soon. It's March 1st. We're in the, the final stretch to spring grass hill season. Uh, dysfunctional famous says, do you do your listing yourself or do you have a, a, a the VA? They mean virtual assistant. No, I do it myself. I do everything myself. 100%. Trust and what's funny, if you're asking that, I, it crossed my mind yesterday. I'm like, I need a virtual assistant. I can take the pictures and upload, or at least have someone to cross cross post all this stuff to Poshmark and Etsy. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Maybe I'll get there one day. But no, I do not. I do everything myself. Oh, absolutely, Richard Dawson. Yep, talking about uh, Family Feud. Yep, Richard Dawson, and he would like full on kiss women on the lips. <laughs> like <laughs> evil Knievel toys yep absolutely i have that evil Knievel jacket i have listed it's pretty awesome i have it really high though so it'll take a special buyer thanks monty have a good weekend appreciate you anissa what was the game show the guest would pick out their gifts i'll take a jumpsuit for 500 Hmm. I don't remember, Anissa. Anybody remember that one? Yeah, Indy Colt says they have three inches of snow in here in Pennsylvania. Yeah, we were supposed to get more here in Northern Virginia, but it kind of shifted north. <laughs> Moronic Pest, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, Indy Colt says garage sales aren't even a thought yet. Nope. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For for real girl says that's right. Richard Dawson from Hogan's Heroes. Yep. Yep, he was. Okay. Well, I guess that's it all. I appreciate everyone uh popping in. Um uh, yeah. We're up to 61 watching and, and I can't thank you guys enough. You guys are awesome to me and we do appreciate all the the subscribers and new subscribers, uh, the super chatters, the patrons, you guys are awesome. If you guys need anything, I hate to do this, but if you need any like supplies or stuff, we do have our Amazon affiliate links in every video. So everything from bubble wrap to tape, the boxes to whatever you need, uh, we get a few pennies if you buy stuff off that. So appreciate it if you do that. But uh, we are going thrifting this weekend just like normal. But we will see you guys on Monday again with a live video and our haul video on Tuesday. So see you guys then. You guys have a good weekend. Later.